Several people have asked me how to create screencasts, so I'm going to do a quick screencast that shows you how to do it. The first thing is to get Windows Media Encoder, so with a quick live search, I pull back the first page of results, which is Windows Media Encoder. Um, there are two versions, one for 32-bit OSs and one for 64-bit OSs. Uh, you would install the appropriate one. I'm not going to run through that here since I already have it installed, but I did want to show you how to get it. Once you have it on your system, all you have to do is run. And you'll be loaded into the new session wizard. Uh, I will note that there is one minor difference between the 64-bit and 32-bit versions, which is that the 32-bit version has this nice capture screen wizard to start up with. You can get everything just the same with the 64-bit 64 64-bit version. Uh, this is just a little quicker, and most people have 32-bit OSs, so I will demonstrate this. A quick double-click takes me into the wizard that will set it up. Um, the first question is, what do you want to capture? Specific window or region of the screen or the entire screen? Um, there are implications for each of these. Uh, so you capture the entire screen when you want to capture absolutely everything that's going on. The recycle bin in the upper left-hand corner, the sidebar on the right-hand side, all the pop-ups that come up. It's useful um, when you're doing something that involves multiple applications or applications interacting with each other. Um, the specific window is what I'm going to be showing uh, because I'm just going to be doing a quick browser-based demo. It's pretty simple to use. Um, it does have the disadvantage that if you're doing something like what we can do with Popfly where you uh, create an application and then run it as a Vista sidebar gadget, you miss the Vista sidebar gadget portion of it. Um, region of the screen is actually the most useful when you just want to show one specific attribute of something, uh, like one little tiny piece of the screen um, because it reduces all the other visual clutter. Um, normally I would also turn on capture audio from the default audio device. Um, because I'm actually using a terminal server session into my laptop from my desktop in order to capture this, um, if I were to turn that on, uh, I would get an error message when I went to actually capture the video. Um, so I'm not going to turn it on, but normally you would click this on. Uh, the next thing is which window do I, do I want to capture? Um, I'm going to capture my IE window, and I do want to flash the border during capture just to give me a visual reminder that I am uh, recording something. Um, the name of the file is set next. I'm okay with test.wmv. There are three options here for quality. Um, actually, Windows Media Encoder supports dozens of different uh, encoding quality options, but for the purpose of what we're doing here, um, uh, I'll just say that high works the best for screencasts because it captures most of the font fidelity. The other thing to know is that when you're capturing things, you want to set just the amount of screen real estate to be recorded that you need. So if you are capturing your entire IE window, recognize that there's still a lot of people out there who just want to see a 640 by 480 pixel window and uh, make your window as small as you possibly can to record that. Uh, okay, I click Next. Uh, you can set some information about it. It's not important. And then when I click Next, I get to the, the final screen. Now, normally by default, Begin Capturing Screens when I click Finish is clicked on. Um, I unclick it uh, so that um, I don't just immediately start capturing and I can have a little more control. Um, but I will click Finish. That minimizes Windows Media Encoder and opens the window I'm going to demo in. Now, I'm going to flip back to Windows Media Encoder to show you um, one more useful aspect of this. It's the Properties menu. Um, you can set a bazillion properties on Windows Media Encoder. For the purpose of a screen capture, there are only a couple that you really need to think too much about. Um, here, the video comes from Screen Capture, and when you click the Configure button, you're taken back to a window where you can uh, reset which window you're capturing, the entire screen. You can set a region of the screen. If I select that, I then want to click on this button, which allows me to drag uh, a little border around the region of the screen that I want to capture. Uh, I'm going to go back to just recording this. Um, the other uh, variable that I tweak is on the output tab. It's the name of the file that I'm going to be recording. Pretty much everything else I don't worry about too much. Um, for the fast and quick type of screencasts I do most of the time. Um, you don't need to worry about the video size, the compression you're using, or any specifics like that. Windows Media Encoder does a pretty good job with its defaults. Um, so right now I'm going to start encoding. And because I'm terminal served in, I'm getting a little bit of a weird artifact uh, as it kind of takes control of the screen that normally doesn't happen. 
Uh, and now, you know, I'd drop in and create a mashup in Popfly, and it would be beautiful and work wonderfully. Um, because I'm just recording a little uh, full of how to actually record the screencast, I'm not going to worry too much uh, what actually would be if I were to create it in Popfly. I'm going to go back into Windows Media Encoder and click Stop, which will stop the local recording. I now um, have the option of playing the output file, which I like to do to make sure that it actually recorded what I thought it was going to record. And it looks like it did, including the little peculiar artifact on the screen and me clicking Create a Mashup. Okay, that works fine. And now the next thing is uh, to put it in a place where other people can, can find it. You can put WMV files just about anywhere, um, including uh, on an intranet site, on a UNC path. Um, in another video, I'll show you how to uh, encode this and upload it for Silverlight Streaming, uh, which is both useful and a little involved. Uh, um, thank you for your time.